Hey YouTube, welcome back to another episode of Jack of All Trades. I'm here with the pool heater again and she's not acting right. So what I have going on right now is the pool heater won't kick on at all. And when I do pull the power and put it back on, I get triple eight, then 128, and then R13, okay? The R13 is the software code version. It's not a code for error. You actually have to look behind this panel on the inside to find the error if there is any. Okay, so let's go ahead and I wanna show you exactly how to take this apart. I'm gonna go through this video and I'm gonna demonstrate how to fix the SFS code, which is the stack flu sensor code. And also, I'm gonna show you what a false code looks like that ends up actually being something bigger. Okay, so stay tuned. All right, you wanna start off by taking off your side panels. There's two of them here, two black ones on either side. There's gonna be four screws. They're flathead screws um, on either side. It's also a nut size. I think it's about a 10 millimeter nut. So pull both those panels off on either side. There's one over here too. And then there's gonna be wing nuts on the corners of the lid on all four corners, okay? And that will allow you to pop off the top and flip it over. Be very careful with flipping it over. You don't want to mess up these wires here. All right. Okay. So I'm going to cut the power on because I want to briefly show you the codes here, okay? Before you work on this at all, you want to make sure you do have the power cut, okay? Which I do. my two multimeter probes in there and my reading is 3.74 mega ohms okay and the standard is 3.8 that's really close 3.8 at about 70 degrees all right so just real quick to explain to you how this works when this sensor detects the temperature that's coming out of the out of the pool exhaust the heater exhaust okay if it gets too high as a safety it cuts the pool off all right and that could be a number of reasons why it would get too hot, maybe the gas flow is too high. Uh, one of the common ones is the internal components are sooted up from the flame catching moisture. And in that case, it's a bigger problem to fix. But sometimes these, do, these sensors do go out and you just have to replace them. And then sometimes, like now, the sensor is saying, the, the control board is saying that the sensor is bad, but it's actually the control board. I want to go through these steps here so you can understand exactly what's going on with yours so you can make this determination. So this probe takes a temperature. As the temperature gets higher, that resistance gets lower and lower and lower. When it hits a certain set point, it opens. Internally, it opens that connection, breaks the circuit, kicks the heater off, okay? So in this case here, the pool is not running. It won't even start up and the SFS light is on because it thinks there's an opening there. Now we have just checked the resistance and it's not open, it's 3.74. If it was open, it would be an OL or there would be no resistance at all, it would just be open. So one way you can check now, now we've checked the sensor, we know the sensor is good. If you want to, you can always buy another sensor off of Amazon, they're like 15 bucks for the generic ones. You can try that out and see if that's it, okay? But I'll tell you right now, there's a way to tell if the, if, if the actual control board is wrong. So the resistance that the control board is reading is not the 3.7. It thinks it's open. It thinks there's uh, too high of a temperature or not a sensor at all. So it's keeping everything from starting. One thing you can do is those two, those two leads that you unhook that go to the sensor, you can ground them out. You can connect them. Okay. Now, this would only be briefly done to test, you know, to, to give it a test scenario here so you can see if this is the problem. You can stick a wire between these two or alligator clips or something to, to bridge these, to connect them, okay? And then once you button everything back up and turn it on, reset your power, pull the breaker, put it back in and turn it on and it'll kick on. If it kicks on, it's your control board. You need to replace your control board. If it doesn't kick on, then you have another problem you need to troubleshoot. 
but this FSS code, if your sensor is reading the correct resistance, then it's gotta be that control board or it's gotta be a chewed up cable. There's not much to that circuit. It's the control board, the cabling that goes to the sensor, and then the sensor, that's it. All right, so check that out. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I have a new control board. I bought it off Amazon. I bought, I bought a stack flu sensor off Amazon too, just to troubleshoot that. I'm gonna have the link for both of those in the description below. Now, first off, I'm not getting anything from Pentar or any of these companies to do this. I'm just showing this for you so that you can do this work yourself. As long as you follow some basic safety with pulling, pulling the power when you're working on it and not messing with the gas side of the house, you should be okay. This is just electronics. Um, I want to I want to bring something up here. This control board, the the factory control board, is very expensive. We're talking four to five hundred dollars for the control board. If you have somebody else install it for you, you're looking at six seven hundred dollars probably, maybe less. But it's very expensive. You can buy generic ones on Amazon for under a hundred bucks, 70, 80 bucks. And if you do that, if you take that route, please understand that they may not last very long. What I did and what you should probably do yourself is go ahead and buy the generic one off Amazon, but also buy Amazon's extended warranty for the electronic part. For about five or six bucks, you can get a two year warranty on the control board. I went ahead and did a three year warranty for 10 bucks. So in the next three years, if this burns out, I'll get a brand new one. From Amazon and I'll, I'll install it and we're, we're back in business I'll do the same warranty for it okay so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you real quick how to install this and we'll show the startup and and how it works afterwards all right so we're ready to do the control panel first most important thing pull the power secure the power and you're ensuring the power is off there's there's no more lights okay so what I like to do whenever I replace any parts is I get the old part and the new part side by side and I try to take a picture too, just in case the wiring is different. But I want to compare the connectors and make sure that everything is the same, okay? And the only thing that I notice with this is, is this connector in the top right has a clip down here. And on this one, the clip is at the top. So I'm going to look real carefully here, but I might keep the orientation the same. This could just be a power button. So really all it needs is like the grounding. But I'm going to switch everything over between these two components. There's only a couple screws here. It looks like four screws. One, two, three, four. Take it off. Move everything over. And then we'll give it a test from there. Okay. It looks pretty simple from there. Uh, my new one came with a new pad. But my pad was replaced last year. So I'm just going to hang on to this. And uh, we'll, we'll come back whenever I get this done. All right. Connectors are all back in. I did go ahead and orient this one uh, the different way to connect with the tab. Uh, if something doesn't work, then I'm going to turn it off and flip this around back to its original spot. All the connectors are in all the way, fully seated. Uh, this control board is made for a lot of different companies, so you might see the connectors are slightly different. Uh, these, these don't quite clip in exactly the same way, but they look real tight. They're just not, uh, the clips are backwards. So anyway, uh, make sure you connect your lead back to your stack flu sensor, put it all back together and we'll give it a test. All right, so it's a little bit louder now. I have my, my full pump on. Uh, that's in order to get the heater to run. So I just wanted to show you here real quick. We're gonna, we're gonna unsecure the power. And then we're gonna go right to the pool heater. It hasn't ran, hasn't made any noise this whole time. So if it does anything, we're moving in the right direction. All right, I'm gonna turn the pull on. The exhaust is coming on. Heating. This is all good signs. The fan's on. There's the gas valve. Burners on. Well, that's it. Bad control board. Uh, could have been uh, electrical variances. Could have been a power surge. Could have been anything. Could have been age. Could have been water. Uh, all I know is my pool heater is back up and running. It cost me 80 bucks uh, and a little bit of time. Hopefully, this costs you uh, less time and less effort than it took, took me. I made this video for you. I hope you liked it. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Take care.